So that's good. You can prove that formally and label everything and all that. Let's have a look over here because you've got a very similar situation again with these intercepts. I haven't drawn them in. There are no triangles yet. What could I join up? What could I join up? I joined up chords over here, right? I'm going to join some chords over here too. There's a big one, there's a little one. Here's the big one uh, on this side over here. And then here's the little one. Okay. Now, there are similar triangles tucked away inside this diagram just like there were over here. Uh, where are they? Where are they? They're not like facing each other like this. These ones are trickier. What's the relationship? Michael, do you see it? Yeah, very good. This one with P and R in it is similar to this whole thing. Now, how do we go about showing that? Well, again, we only need a pair of angles, sorry, a pair of pairs of angles. Uh, there's a really easy one. What's the easiest angle that's related between both of them? Yeah, just this guy. He's in both triangles. So I'm just going to mark him in like that. That angle is common. Now, I only need one other angle. One in the big triangle, one in the little triangle. Think about the properties that you know, one fairly recently. Yeah, Paul? I love how you're like, I'm, I'm, I totally, totally got the... <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Well, tell me, tell me what shape this is. You guys can all tell me what shape this is inside the circle. It's a, it's a cyclic quadrilateral, right? You only have two properties about cyclic quadrilaterals, namely that the, one of them is about these angles here. But that's not very useful to you, is it? Because this angle here, for instance, is not an angle in a triangle, right? But you can relate this one also to this one, can't you? What's the relationship? The exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior angle. So this guy... Exactly. Like those, the, the second property we just used is a, um, a shortcut to using that one and then going angles on a straight line, okay? So again, we've got our pair of um, similar triangles, but do watch out because uh, they're not facing the same direction. Do you notice that? Um, these ones are really nice. It's like A goes with D because they're both at the top, C goes with B because they're both at the bottom. But this one, you can see they're, they're flipped over on each other. Does that make sense? So for example, side P, what does that correspond to in the other triangle, in the big triangle? Yeah, so it corresponds to these two together because it's on the bottom, it's the one close to this angle, right? So I would have to say, uh, do it in alphabetic order, R plus S. Okay, that's the corresponding side. Small triangle to big triangle. What's the other side of the small triangle that's useful? I guess we'd say R, that's the other side in the small triangle, and it corresponds to P plus Q. Now, what this sort of um, reveals kind of handily is that there's more than one kind of intercept, right? For example, A and B are intercepts on this chord, but A plus B is also an intercept. It's just a bigger one, okay? So in this case here, when I cross multiply, have a look at what we get. We get this, P, P plus Q. There's a product, you see that? And then here you've got R, R plus S. There's, there's another pair of intercepts, right? So in fact, the wording for this is identical for this, except when, we're not talking about intersecting chords, are we? What, what are these things, these shapes that we're looking at? They're not chords at all. I guess the way we'd say it is, products of intercepts, that's the way you start it off. Let's, let's do that. Because we're still talking about intercepts that are multiplied together. So products, products of intercepts. On. Okay, how do we name these things? Uh, well, they come from outside the circle, so we are going to talk about some external point. But if I just told you about this line here, what would you call that? You've got a name for this. It starts with an S. It's a secant. It cuts right across the circle, right? So I would say products of intercepts on secants, because you've got, you've got two of them, from an external point. And ironically, it's actually not the external point part of this that's the important part. It's the fact that it's the same external point, right? You can't just take secants from wherever you like and just like, oh, I've got 
and I've got this guy over here and he's related. It's like he has no relationship with that guy. It's because they both come from here that you get the similar triangles. Does that make sense? So products of intercepts on secants from an external point, same deal. Same, same equality relationship. Okay.